Good morning. God is on the throne. Amen. Amen. Power's back on in the church. We praise God that we've got power back in the church. So I'm going to preach at you for a while. Is it okay? It's okay. Uh, we praise God for everybody's online. Let's say hi to them this morning. You're joining us. Hello, everybody. Hello. We praise God for all of you, too. And we are. We're lifting up our community uh, in prayer. We're, we're li- praying with uh, every other church in this area that is lifting up the community in prayer. And we're going to help them out uh, any way that we can. Amen. Amen. And if you have your word this morning, if you have your Bible, I'd encourage you to hold it up. Let's praise God for the word of God that we have here. And we say this, we say, thank you, Lord, for your word. May it speak to my heart today. Amen. 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 Today we're looking at Psalm 46. If you have your Bible, open it somewhere towards the middle and you'll find Psalm 46 this morning. And that's our word today. Uh, Psalm 46, starting in verse one, we read the following that God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place for the most high dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and he burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. As the Lord has taught us to pray, let's pray this together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and is the power and the glory forever. Thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for being already in our midst, Lord, with the Sunday school, with the worship and the powerful, powerful testimonies. Lord, we praise your holy name. Now, as we open your word together, Lord, I pray that you would speak to every heart and every mind in this place, that you would lead us, that you would guide us, Father, that you would tell us exactly what you want to say to us today. We're at your feet, Lord. We praise you and we thank you for, for, for being willing to speak with us, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 How's everybody doing today? How's everybody doing? It's been, a, been an eventful couple weeks, hasn't it? It's been a lot, hasn't it? It's been a lot. I know that a lot of people have gone through a lot of things. And I would encourage that that you would pray and and seek how we can help out those that have have lost so much more than what we have. Uh, There are people that have been through so many things, uh, even worse uh, than what most of us have had to go through. So I would encourage you all to to be praying and be having the Lord speak to your heart and tell you how, how you can help out as a church community, okay? And I'll be putting up those things on, online in our church Facebook for any of our online community that wants to help out too uh, about ways and outlets that you can help uh, give to the, the cause of storm rebuilding. Who, who would have thought at the beginning of the month we'd be looking at storm rebuilding? But here we are. We're going to be looking at that. I want to talk to you today about a, a divine truth. Uh, that we need to be reminded of on a continual basis, especially in times like these. Uh, Divine truth that is so important because we need to know it, we need to remember it if we are going to survive and even thrive in this world that we live in. Because we live in a broken world, don't we? That's, That's the honest assessment of it. I don't know if you'll get a politician to tell you that, but we do. We live in a broken world. It's a world that's been broken, by the thing called sin. And this old thing called sin that happened so long ago has wrecked the earth. And we, we, we live in a world that is broken from it. And because of that, because sin entered in, guess what came in with it? Death entered in 
to this old world too. In fact, that was decreed by, by God that the wages of sin is yeah. death. That's what it says. If you're looking in Romans 6.23, it'll tell you that. And so it has been, it has been determined that in this earthly life uh, that, we're gonna, that we are blessed to live, we're going to have to go through some things. We will have to go through some things. There's no way to really circumvent that. Uh, we are appointed a few things that we have to go through. And the scriptures attest to that very thing. For instance, in, in Hebrews 9, 27, and also in Ecclesiastes 3, we see that we are appointed a time to die. Did you ever think about that? Right, that that's, that's, that's real. We are appointed a time to die. Well, this, this old earthly body, point your body, it has an expiration date. Uh-oh. I mean, it, it, does, it, it does. It has an expiration date. We are also told in the scriptures that in this life, uh, we're going to have hard work in this life. That's what it says in Genesis 3. And it also says we're going to have trouble. That's what the Lord said in John chapter 16. So we have things we have to deal with in this life. And it's part of this life for us to go through things like this. And, and, and in a lot of ways, it's impossible to avoid it. You can't circumvent it. So what does that mean? You have to go through it. Somebody say go through you have to go through. And that's the best way to look at it, too. We don't want to put our head, head in the sand and pretend like nothing bad ever happens ever. Because what do we do when we have to deal with it? So we need to be aware that we have to go through things. And we also need to be aware that we don't want to go through, through these things alone. Amen. I would encourage that to anybody that is here in person, anybody watching online, do not go through this journey of life alone. And we don't have to. We don't have to because we have a God in heaven who loves us so much that he gave his one and only son that he could have communion with us again. That he can be with us through these valleys. He can be with us through these difficult circumstances. But the enemy doesn't want you to know that. He'll use circumstances and distractions, especially lately it's been circumstances and distractions, sometimes politics, uh, to convince you that God isn't there, that God doesn't care. Hmm. He'll, he'll raise things like this, like the recent events that we've experienced, to ask questions of God in the worst possible ways, maybe even to the point of asking, God, are you really there? Are you really there? Because of the enormity of the chaos that surrounds us, uh, it, it's easy to get swept up in the hysteria of it and forget that we have a God who is here right now with us right now. The beloved I, I would bet anything. I, I know my, with my very soul that God is here. God is here. Amen. And he's there in the midst of our chaos. And he's there in the midst of our hurting. And he's there in the midst of our healing. Beloved, God is there. I want you to know that with all that's within me, I want you to know that he is there and beloved, that he will never, ever leave. Amen? Amen. He will never leave. Now we sang a song today uh, in, our, in our worship set. It wasn't fun to worship together. We didn't get to do that last week. So we had some extra today to, to think about this. But it was good to worship together. We sang this song together called Blessed Assurance. How many of you like that hymn? I, I like that hymn a whole yes. lot. And I did some research on Blessed Assurance this past week, uh, looking in on it. It was written by this wonderful lady named Fanny Crosby in 1873. That hymn's been around for a while, hasn't it? And of course, Blessed Assurance it is. It's one of the most well-known hymns of all time. And for so many, it's been an anthem of praise for generations of people who have lived their entire lives knowing this song. I personally find it remarkable that such a powerful praise song could come from someone who had seen so much hardship like Fanny Crosby. And if you look at her life and you study about the things that she had to go through throughout her entire life, uh, you, you would think that somebody going through that would wind up being bitter. Now, by six weeks old, Fanny Crosby was completely blind. Did you know that? I did not know that until I was researching on this. By six weeks old, she was completely blind and it was likely caused by a botched medical experiment on her eyes. They, the doctor messed up. And as a result, she was rendered completely blind for the rest of her life. When she was six months old, her father died. Oh. She was raised uh, by, by her mother and her grandmother. And yet, throughout her earthly life, 
Fannie met the challenges of being blind head on and then stayed remarkably positive. And there are more, they, 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 they had to go through these things without the invention of Braille back then. Uh, what she was going through, they had not quite invented Braille. They were starting to work on it at the same time that she was going to school from what I studied, from what I read about her. So she never really wound up using the Braille system. Instead, she memorized and she studied with the aid of poetic verse. Now, isn't that something? And she was very skilled at it. She was renowned for it, actually. She wrote many poems, including eulogies for specific presidents, too. And she did wind up getting married to a man, uh, Alexander Alstein, and I believe he was blind also. And uh, they did actually have a child. Uh, the child died in infancy. One hardship after another hardship after another hardship. And you would think that it would be easy for someone to grow bitter and to grow weary after seeing an entire lifetime of hardships like this. And yet there was something in Fanny Crosby that would not let those hardships get the better of her. There was something in her that would not let the hardships of her life extinguish that eternal flame of praise that was within her. And she lived for 94 years. Oh, wow. She was 94 years young when she went on to glory. And in that time, it, it was believed in her 94 years that she wrote something upwards of 5,000 hymns of praise. 5,000 or more hymns of praise. They can't, they can't get a quite a, a number of them because many of them she wrote anonymously because she didn't want the attention to be on her. She wanted it to be on our Heavenly Father. And yet this gift, what she was given, she used it to praise God. And a woman that had seen so much hardship, instead of being so bitter as so many people could have been, instead she, she penned the words like this. And she said, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. And this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. What a beautiful testimony. What a beautiful testimony. There's only one way, beloved, that, that somebody who had seen so much hardship for so long in their life could write verses like that. Beloved, she knew that God was there. In the midst of her trials, in the midst of her troubles, in the midst of her hardships and the valleys that she went through again and again, she had to know that God was there leading her through the valleys like the gentle shepherd that he is. He was there holding her hand and holding her together and leading her through her whole life. And that's why she could say that all was at rest, that I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above filled with his goodness, so lost in his love. There's no other way that you can explain it. She was filled by that Holy Spirit power. And she knew day after day, journey after journey, that God is there. Look at your neighbor and tell them, God is here. God is here. And he's in the midst of our trials. And he's in the midst of our hurting. God is there, beloved. Even if you can't see him at the time, even if you can't feel him at the moment, God is there. He's there. I pray that each one of us might be able to see with the spiritual eyes that Fanny Crosby did. I do. Because we're surrounded by so much negativity. We turn on our phones and it's just blah, 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 negative, negative, negative. You turn on your TVs and it's all blah, 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 negative, negative, negative. You look at politics, oh my goodness, shield my ears, Lord. Uh, negative, <laughs> negative, negative. But we have this remarkable example of a lady who should have been bitter, should have been bitter, and she was not. She glowed with the radiance of the glory of God. What a remarkable worshiper and sister in Christ, Fanny Crosby, and I can't wait to talk to her in glory one day. Amen. So in our source text today, in Psalm 46, we, we, we note three things about our Heavenly Father, our God who is always there. Beloved, we note that God is our refuge, that God is our strength, Amen. and that God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. Yeah. That's what we read. 
And that's what we're talking about today. God is our refuge. Somebody say that with me. God is our refuge. Yes, he is. In Psalm 62, if you're taking notes, Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8, we read, Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. What a beautiful thing. Beloved, when troubles come, and those of us that, that have some sense, we're going to seek shelter, aren't we? When storms come, do we stand out in the thunderstorm and the rain? Say, oh, it looks bad. We seek shelter, don't we? We seek shelter. Look to your neighbor and say, seek shelter. We seek shelter. We seek shelter. And we know that the storms in this life are going to come. We know they're going to happen. So what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to sh seek shelter, right? Now where are we called to seek shelter in? Are we called to seek shelter in the things that are temporary? And the things that don't last? Do we seek shelter? And unfortunately, I've heard of many failings of our government as of late. Do we seek shelter in that? It doesn't last, does it? Do we seek shelter in, in grocery stores? No. We don't. We can't seek shelter in that, can we? Hmm. It's been my experience that it's better to just go ahead and admit that we need to seek shelter, okay? And we need to admit that we aren't tough enough to handle it on our own. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you, but you're not tough enough. That goes for any one of us. Any one of us, we're not tough enough. It's better to admit that because we're going to find it out sooner or later, beloved. We will. Because of that. We need to make, for, make sure that we understand what the Lord has done. We need to understand that He is our refuge, that He is our shelter, and that He has no equal. There's nothing like taking refuge in the arms of God. There's nothing like it. Hmm. We need to be prepared because life and death and judgment that follows are realities, beloved. They're realities. There's no sense in playing around. It's a reality. And we need to take shelter in the arms of God, not a man-made bunker. We can't dig a hole in the ground and say, we'll be sheltered from this. It's not going to save you. It won't. We need to take shelter in the arms of God. I think of, of saints, precious saints, that I have had the opportunity of ministering to. And they knew they were coming to the end of their earthly lives. They knew it. And yet they were remarkably calm and they were remarkably at peace with that because they were taking shelter in the arms of everlasting God. I witnessed people, especially even now lately, I've witnessed people who have lost everything, everything. And yet they're remarkably at peace because they're taking shelter in the arms of God. Hmm. I know it wasn't by might, it wasn't by power, it was by His Spirit, amen? Because they're taking refuge in Him. And I have to wonder, do, do we all have that blessed assurance today? I pray that we do. If you're online watching, I pray that you have that blessed assurance today because God wants to be your refuge, beloved. He wants to be your refuge. He did not send Jesus down here for nothing. He sent Him down here so that we could take refuge in our Heavenly Father so that he could gather in all the lost sheep. Boy, we're running around doing our own thing. Man, he's doing crazy stuff. And Jesus Christ came down, paid the price for our sins, and we could have communion with the Father once again. He wants to be our refuge. He wants to be our refuge, beloved. And we don't need to be avoiding that. We need to be running to him. We don't need to let circumstances push us away. We need to be going to him. Next, we see in our source text that God is our, what's that S word? He is our strength, beloved. He is our strength. In Isaiah 12, verse 2, we read that surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. That the Lord, the Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Hmm. Beloved, can I tell you, if you live long enough, you will see that human strength is a very temporary thing. It's a very temporary thing. I used to be able to lift weights a lot harder when I was 25 than I can right now. It's not as easy. And if I try to make it as easy, it hurts a lot more. 
That's just the way it is. Human strength does not last forever. It doesn't. It's, it's here today and it's gone tomorrow. It just doesn't last. So with that in mind, let's train our spiritual eyes to focus on a strength that lasts. Amen? Amen. And namely, it is found Amen. only in the God of our salvation. Amen? Amen? And from generation to generation, from the dawn of creation until the end of time, and even beyond that, God's strength will last. Amen? Amen. It will. There's nothing else like it. And the trials, that they, they will come. Hmm. It's not a question of when, or our if rather, but when, the trials will come. When they do come, I want that strength in my life. I want that strength in my corner. I want that strength empowering me. And if I'm called to minister to somebody else that's in need, I need that strength within me, amen? amen. We can't generate it ourselves. If we try to do it in our own efforts, we're gonna fall flat in our face. I need his strength. Now, beloved, I'm reminded that this region has gone through and is going through a tremendous time of trial and loss. Uh, in my lifetime, I've never seen anything quite like it. I'll be honest. I, I went through the tornado thing. I saw that. That was terrible. This seems to be worse and more widespread in ways that we were not ready for. We weren't. It might go down as one of the worst hurricanes in our nation's history in terms of lives lost and property damage. And yet, in the midst of great trial, I see triumph. You know why I see triumph? I see triumph because I see hearts and minds turned to God in a powerful way. And all of a sudden, things like politics aren't so important anymore. All of a sudden, things like, what's your church denomination that's not so important anymore? The children of God see a people in need, and the children of God want to help. And when we have the opportunity to do that, you know what it does? It turns hearts and minds to God. Because the people that have lost so much are seeing the things that fade away. Things like a government that doesn't help like it should. Things like insurance that promised it's all going to be okay, saying, oh, we're not going to cover that. There's opportunities for us as a church family all over this entire region to help people in need, to show them a refuge and a strength that lasts, beloved. We're in our 50-year history right now. We're going to be celebrating 50 years of having the Church of the Nazarene. It's very possible that we might be able to make more of an impact in our community right now than we ever have in the 50-year history of having the Church of the Nazarene. We need to seize the opportunity and to step up in the name of Jesus, and to help people. But hearts and minds are turning to the Lord in, in strong and powerful ways. I, I, I've talked about this earlier in testimony time, but I saw the governor of Virginia holding hands and praying for people in the name of Jesus. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Hearts and minds are turning to the rock of our salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. And people are very receptive to this right now. Fields are wide unto harvest. People have to know. They have to know. We've been entrusted with. We've been given the privilege and the responsibility to carry the good news of the gospel to a people in need to share this refuge and this strength that has been around us our whole lives. Amen? We need to tell the whole world about this. And finally, we see that God is our ever-present help. Somebody say that with me. He's our ever-present help. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad he's that ever-present help? In Deuteronomy 31.6, we read this. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Here's one of those fear verses we talked about. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Isn't that wonderful news? Isn't that wonderful news? It doesn't matter what kind of disaster has befallen you. The Lord of Lords is not going to leave you. Beloved, he is with us. The Lord Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 28 that as we go into all the world sharing this good news and he's with us unto the very end of the age, he has not left, he will not leave. And his refuge and his strength is right there with us. Do you trust that today, beloved? Amen. Do you trust in it? He is our refuge, beloved. He is our strength. He is that blessed assurance. 
And if you don't know that now, you could know that today. Amen? Amen. You could know it. I want to open up that opportunity for people. If you don't know them, if you've run away from them, that you've got that opportunity to take refuge in, under the shadow of his wings. And maybe there's somebody watching online who has never reached out to the Lord before. Maybe you're struggling in ways you can't even explain. I want you to know that the Lord is right there. He hasn't gone anywhere. You can reach out to him with an attitude of repentance and then you can be healed, forgiven, and restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, today we're going to end things just a little bit differently. We're going to pray for our community. And anybody who, who feels like they want to, I'm going to invite you to come up and, and you can pray at the altar. You can sit up front if you want to or just pray right where you're at. You're at. Uh, today we're going to lift up our entire community and we're going to pray for those in need. Uh, if anybody's online and pray with us, please do. So uh, whoever wants to, let's, let's gather. Let's pray this morning, okay? I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, for this time. Father, I, I'm lifting up uh, this entire community to you this morning, Lord. And we think of like we just talked about, Lord, uh, the, the, the school system, Lord. We, we pray for the, the school children who have been kind of uh, had their schedules all altered. We pray for the teachers, Lord, uh, who, who are needing guidance. Father, we, we lift up those that are in positions of authority, Father. I pray that you would just give them wisdom. Lord, thank you for always being there for us, Lord, for always being with us. Uh, Father, I pray that you would just be with us today. And Father, that you would be that refuge for those that are crying out to you. Father, that they might take shelter in your everlasting arms this morning, Lord. I pray that you would just hold them together. And Father, I pray for those that need that supernatural strength, maybe now more than ever, Lord. Father, I pray that you would strengthen and equip those that need that touch from you today. Lord, we lift up this entire community, Father. This entire community, Father. We lift up our, our first responders, Father. We lift up our governing officials. We lift up those that have lost so much, Father. We pray that you would heal them and that you would restore those that have lost so much. Lord, would you turn all of the hearts and minds to you, Father, even through this. Even through this, Lord, that you would turn hearts and minds to you. Maybe those that are far away, Lord, that you would equip us, Lord, as, as your children. I pray that you would equip every single person that is volunteering in the church, not just in this church, but in every church in the area that is volunteering to share your good news as they minister in word and in deed, Father, that you would bless the work of their hands and the words of their mouth as they bring your good news, Father, not just with words, but with actions too. I pray that you would bless this through and through and you would equip us, Father, to be the people that we should be. We praise you, we thank you, and we love you, Lord, this morning. Continue to bless this church. Continue to bless the events coming up, Lord. We thank you and praise you for it, Father. We ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, beloved, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God bless each one of you. You are dismissed. Praise you, Father.